wake up by 3 to 4 a.m. <laughs> oh no, that makes us sleepy. I've just finished with another day of medical school. Currently I'm on general practice or Americans call it family medicine and we finish a lot later than usual when I'm on this rotation. It's currently 16.20 and I'm waiting for my train back home. and walk back home it takes half an hour so it's enough time to listen to a few medical school voice notes or catch up on a podcast interestingly during my commute i feel a strong sense of responsibility to spend my time wisely maybe it's because i know i'm already disadvantaged against people who doesn't need to travel daily to work or school so i make an effort to do something beneficial for myself and when i get to rest at home it feels so much better <laughs> It's already so dark outside. <laughs> How was your day? Uh, good. It's actually quite nice. Now, sometimes it's a bit slow, but we had some really nice teaching. We swabbed ourselves and put it on an agar plate, and oh. we're gonna see what grows, so that's kind of fun. Wow, well, you're in microbiology, aren't you? Yeah. Ooh. A little bit cold outside, but actually it's really cold. I was freezing on the way back from the hospital. Really? It was so cold. Okay, I think I'm ready. See you later. See ya. I'm usually starving by the time I get home. So I grab a snack to have enough energy to get my dinner ready, which is quite quick, usually because I meal prep on the weekend to save time. instinct when I come to my room is to lie on my bed but I've been trying to turn that instinct into a reminder to quickly unpack and clean out any rubbish in my bag or pockets when I skip unhelpful habits and do something good as soon as I get into my room it sets a positive momentum and makes it easier for me to tackle the rest of my evening tasks I usually eat dinner right after I get home, which is around 4 to 5 p.m. And I aim to eat at least three hours before bed. And since my flatmates have their meals past 8 o'clock, I don't see them much in the evenings as I'm already asleep by then. And you know, this can be one of the disadvantages of going to sleep early. But all of my flatmates are medical students and we all have 8 o'clock placements the next morning. So we don't really have time to hang out much in the evenings on weekdays anyway. <laughs> Nice and warm. 
I get very sleepy a lot earlier in the evening than most people do. So I sleep by 8 p.m. and wake up by 3 to 4 a.m. I'm not sure which one started the cycle for me first, whether waking up early caused me to feel sleepy earlier in the evening or vice versa, but I know this has been my routine my whole life. I'm aware that my natural circadian rhythm or my body's internal clock sits on the earlier side of the spectrum, but everyone is unique and what really matters is how we spend our time, not when we sleep and wake up. I'm a lot more efficient in the morning, so I do majority of my work then. And in the evenings, I just prioritize resting. But realistically, there are still some days where I study in the evenings, like if it's exam season. But I find keeping evening work very minimal and doing it as soon as I can works the best because the more I push it further, the more sleepy and less productive I get. In one of the Skillshare classes I watched on how to beat procrastination, it talked about reducing what makes doing that action inconvenient. Like when we're sleepy, doing anything becomes inconvenient. By the way, Skillshare has classes on a variety of topics, from freelancing to self-development to marketing to how to take your crochet to the next level. It guides you step by step on how to develop a new hobby or how to turn that hobby into earnings. And the best part is Skillshare offers one month free trial so you can access all of these incredible courses without paying anything. And if you feel it's not for you, you can cancel your subscription within the trial so it's risk-free. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this part of the video. The first 500 people to use my link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. to do my skincare at least an hour before bedtime so it gives the products enough time to absorb properly so I don't wipe it all off on my pillow but I try to still time it close enough to sleep for low cortisol levels because research suggests low cortisol helps with effective nighttime skin repair. By the way cortisol is a stress hormone in our body that naturally goes down as we prepare for sleep. It's funny, my mom had some reservations towards me sitting in a red room and just getting on with my evening because you know, historically red is associated with evil and negative things. But the reason I switch my LED lights to warmer colors like yellow and red is because they are less disruptive on our circadian rhythm compared to blue lights. So it helps with melatonin production in our body, the hormone that makes us sleepy. Mm -hmm. 